Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher and welcome to All About Canadian Books. This week's author reading and writing tip is from author Irene Marks. She is the author of a novel called Daria and it was published by Anana Publications. If you missed our behind the book interview, I will put links down below in the description box so you can watch our interview. Irene, you are an, an educator. What is your number one writing tip? So, I mean, I teach creative writing courses, but uh, um, I would say that uh, you should write about a subject matter that really interests you, that you are passionate about, mm -hmm. uh, despite what other people tell you to write about. You should also really listen to your voice. I think we all have a, a you know, a unique technique or tone in our writing, and we should really nourish that and develop that. Um, and I think that sometimes we listen to many other voices telling us, uh, you know, what is the best way to write. And I think we should fundamentally listen to our gut feeling. Uh, this is not to say that you don't have to read widely, because I do think you have to read widely other books in order to also develop your writing. But go with your own voice, uh, even if it initially people will say, well, I don't know what you are talking about. It's not a... I think writing literature is about finding new ways of, of, of uh, saying the world. And so I think we should push language uh, in that direction and listen to our own uh, voice. I love that. And that actually brings me to another question because you, you write in both Portuguese and, and English. So do you, Irene, do you, develop two distinct voices for each language or do you feel that they blend together? I mean, I'm not sure if I'm the best person to answer that. I think they blend together. I think that, that I mix, uh, I, I think they blend. I mean, I don't, uh, although perhaps sometimes in English, I may feel, and Daria may fall in that category, I may feel the need to sometimes express certain things in a more what I will call rational manner, but but I, but I also alternate because Daria, you know, as a as multiple narratives, and some of them are more objective or literal, and the other ones are are very allegorical or magic or realist. So, um, yes. And you are kind enough to read to us from your novel. Um, may I ask before you begin your reading why you've chosen this particular excerpt to read? So I'm going to read an excerpt uh, from the, the, the section, The Dream of Lavender. And it's a dream uh, um, that Daria, the main character has, but this section is in the second person. And so I chose to read this excerpt because it's you know from Daria and the novel is also fundamentally about Daria, the feminine voice or the, 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 the woman voice of Daria. But it's also, uh, a passage that is very poetic and very transcendental and the self, the self of Varia, because of the weight of the world, uh, as you know, sometimes as this out of body experiences or these dreams that allow her to um, connect with everything that exists in the world and the universe and get out of her, the confines of her body uh, and connect with others and otherness. And by otherness, I mean the non-human world. And so I, I hope this passage illustrates that. So I'm going to read about for about two minutes. Um, Fabulous. So it's called, uh, it's from the section, The Dream of Lavender. She woke up in the middle of the night, possessed by the astounding beauty that she had seen in the dream and she was in. In this dream, she was dancing or sometimes walking in the middle of the most beautiful field of lavender, mm -hmm. somewhere in Avignon. She felt herself in a forest of open fields, moving through the ups and downs, bouncing and serene, where only lavender had been allowed to flourish and find mineral food from the belly of Mother Earth. She had never been to Avignon, but she had seen the images and in postcards countless times, so she felt that land or the color through which it tells itself was somehow imprinted in her soul. Remember by the eye of the white ego, which never forgets. She always knew that lilac, that color that comes out perfectly only in the flowers of lavender spoke 
to her from some transcendental place that she could not quite understand or grasp with the logic of her mind. But today, this morning, after having been inside the peaceful and floating sensation that those plants and their sight and scent had gifted her, she felt extraordinary like never before, extraordinary. It was as if the world, this world that often imposed so much in, on her shoulders and her lower back, making her cry and contort her body in sheer pain, had suddenly revealed itself as the perfect place in which to attain sanctity and find mercy, a mercy like the title of a novel by Toni Morrison that she adored, a book where finding a cure is all that matters. It was as if her body, habituated to the loads she carried, an overweight and overflowing sack pressed down by the many sad stories of the world, had suddenly discovered that flying is not only possible, but that it is required. She had suddenly realized that, in fact, the ability to fly may just come when you least expect it, in the middle of your dreams at night, when darkness takes over your soul, only to allow for a new dawn, the moment when flight and light will be possible. And the twi twin sisters living in the little girl's eye of your eyes twinkled in newly founded, found redemption. Daria roamed and roamed in the lilac streets until her body was nothing but a mound of lilac and she became indistinguishable from the landscape. She felt pure then, she felt pure and young and clean. And in that state of being, she woke up, blessed like never before and ready to be anything. The secretary or the professor or the nanny, because labels did not frazzle her, did not weaken her, did not bring her to the lower point, at least not for the time being. She felt she could be anything under the sun. And in fact, she wanted to be anything under the sun. She wanted to feel the universe upon her with the wisdom of different people entrenched in her cells, making her immensely erudite. She wanted to be a shoemaker living in the Middle Ages, producing a stunning shoe from beginning to end with her hands. She wanted to feel that sense of completion and wholeness that only creation, whole, wholly holistic without the vision of labor can produce. She wanted to be a seller and a maker of coal like her mother had been, pulling deep sturdy roots out of the earth and smelling its fresh moisture, or a son enclosed in a remote 13th century, sorry, or a nun enclosed in a remote 13th century monastery, praying avidly to Christ with eyes shut and bosom pulsating, praying rosary after rosary, until she found bliss and orgasmic divinity, or Nelson Mandela waiting and waiting for the idea to realize itself, or Wangari Muta Matai at the moment when she, her ashes were spread by the trunk of a young tree, and all it suddenly made sense ad infinitum. She wanted to be all stories and all people and beings and things without any comments, any comments to intrude. I will end here. Uh Irene, that is so beautiful. I can I can smell the lavender and the lilacs. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for being a guest this week on All About Canadian Books. I loved hearing about your novel, Daria. Thank you, Crystal. It was good to be here. Pleasure, pleasure. Viewers, there will be links down below in the description box so you can visit Irene Mark's website. You can purchase a copy of Daria, Daria, and please, please, please come back and thank you for watching.